Hello everybody, it's the War Hipster here, coming at you with another Contrast Plus Dominion painting tutorial and today we are painting the Man Skewer Bolt Boys. Yes, here they are. It's the most fantastic name in the box, <laughs> I think. And well, we're just going to jump right into painting them. We're going to be doing a slightly different skin tone just so you've got a couple of options when painting through your Dominion box set. This will be a slightly different tone but fundamentally the techniques in it are very very similar they've been primed with grace here and well the place to start is with the skin as discussed so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using some militarum green up first and all we want to do is we just want to go straight in and start painting this militarum green all over the flesh just like this. Now the Manskewer Bolt Boys have got flesh and some, well, the places that you expect, but it's very important that you just kind of hunt around the model for the right areas to place this because it kind of hides in amongst all of that swamp garb that they're wearing so I've started there on the face as you can see however if we look underneath here this little area just here is also skin as well similarly in there and a little bit just in there as well so just be on the hunt be on the lookout And once you've got this Militarum green all over all of that skin, then we'll come back. And with that done, what we are then going to do is we are going to once again, just like in the Gut Rippers video, we are going to take some Plague Bearer Flesh and we're going to paint this over the top. Now the Plague Bearer Flesh changes the properties, mostly of the recess in this instance, making it just appear that little bit more warm giving that flesh a little bit of life against that militarum green just like this So with that done, what we're now going to do is going to move on. I'm going to paint in their cloaks. And well, this is actually very simple. The color we're going to be using is Basilicanum Gray. And we just want to get this all over all of these cloaks. And with that done, what we then want to do is we want to make a roughly six parts contrast medium to one part wildwood mix. Get this really nice, lovely, thin, dark brown wash. And what we want to do is we want to put this all over the top of the lower fabric. So it's still got that kind of grayish appearance. It's just got a little bit of brown added in there as well. Just for a little bit of variation from the top. Just like that. 
These are effectively the trousers we have already do. Except they're not trousers. And with that done, what we're then going to do is we're going to add a little bit of extra kind of darkness to the bottom of the skirts. And the way that we're going to do this is we're going to firstly take some wildwood. And we don't want loads. What we're going to do is we're going to just going to sort of stipple it up around the hem of the robe. Like this. And then what we do is we wash the brush. And then with a clean brush, just where the colours meet, we just stipple at it again to smooth out that transition a little bit. Just like that. You can always add a little bit more wildwood to the bottoms, should you wish. But I'm pretty happy with how that's looking right there. So you just want to go around like this. Just be a little bit careful around here on this one's feet, for example. Like that. Wash the brush. Dipple away at that transition, just smooth it out. You can always wash the brush and do it again if it's not quite pale enough for your taste. There we go, I'm really happy with how that looks. And so with that done, what we're then going to do is we're going to make a roughly two parts gore grunt of fur to one part saigor brown mix. We're going to use this for the wood on the bolt, well, crossbow. Or give it its proper name, the man skewer crossbow. <laughs> Got the card in front of me, so I can look that up. And next up, we're going to use some Saigor Brown on its own to paint in the leather of the quivers. And with that done, what we're then going to do is we're going to use some Gore Grunter fur on its own. This time we're going to be using it for all of the ropes. Just like this. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to use some black Templar. We're going to use this in a couple of different ways. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use this to pick out all of the stitches going to do, we're going to use this to pick out the knots. Like this. Just 
to break up that gold grunt of fur a little bit. You don't have to do every knot if you don't want to. And with that done, what we're now going to do is going to take some Agaros Dunes. I'm going to use this to paint in the bowstring. And with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to make a roughly, once again, four parts contrast medium to one part wildwood mix. So it's nice and thin. I'm going to use this for all of the arrow shafts. A wee bit of dust there. It doesn't matter if you get this on the fletching as well. If anything, it'll just add to the effect a little bit when we come to do those. And with that done, what we're now gonna do is gonna use some Blood Angels Red. I'm gonna use it in two places. Firstly, I'm going to use it on the fletching, so over the top. And that's give it a nice kind of dark brown, brownie red. Of course, if you've avoided it, it'll be a lot brighter than mine is. Like that. What we're also going to do is we're going to use this Blood Angels Red over the top of any face armor. Now, on this guy, this panel here around his tummy, is what I would call face armor because it's got a face on it. Like that. Similarly, on this guy here, his tummy armor isn't face armor, his shoulder is, but also the quiver. So you want to get this all over the quiver as well, apart from on the tongue. And so with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Fire Dragon Bright. I'm going to use this to highlight our face armor. So we just want to pick out all of the edges here. And don't worry if it gets a little too bright and garish for your taste. We are going to be darkening it down in just a second. I just want to do this now. So that the next stage is nice and well it's got quite a lovely highlight of which to still have shining through
And with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take a roughly six parts contrast medium to one part Flesh Terror's red mix. I'm going to paint this all over the top of the red armor. And this will just blend those Fire Dragon bright highlights in and a real richness of tone to our red. You do want to be careful as a small amount of this will go a long way. It's very, very runny at this point. So with that done, our man skewer bolt boys should be looking somewhat like this. I'll just give you a quick tour around them. Like that one side and this one as well there we go looking very good so what we're going to do now is we're going to move on and we're going to start painting in some metallics now, the first one we're going to be using is iron warriors and what we want to do is basically want to pick out all of our silver details so we're going to do things like for lack of a better word the bayonet on the crossbow and the cross part of the bow like so. We're also going to paint in some of the armor pieces, like this one here on his tummy, as well as any kind of bolted on teeth, which this doesn't actually have. Whereas the quiver, as you can see, we've done that as face, as mentioned before. We've got the teeth down here. Like that. We've also got what I'm assuming is a tripod on the back or something like that. So we're going to colour that in with the Iron Warriors. And then for the helmet, what we're going to do is we're going to paint in the visor and the spike and also this back part just here. But we're going to leave the kind of skull cap area in the middle do that a different color. Now of course you can also leave this kind of hip plate here or you can color it in, in silver it's up to you. We are just going for similarly a bit of variation in them and it doesn't have to be uniform across all of them. Because we're going to paint those plates in a different metallic. You just want to go around like this, across all of our man skewer bolt boys, and then we'll come back. So with that Iron Warrior is all applied to our man skewer bolt boys, there's one, and there is the other, and here is the last one. What we're now going to do is we're going to use some thinned down Rune Lord Brass. I'm going to use this to paint in the remaining metallic details. So, for example, on this one here, I've got that knee pad. Just there. Like that. We've also got the skull cap part of the helmet. There, like that. And we've also got the banding here. quiver like so and with that done what we're now going to do is we're going to use some basilicanum gray i'm going to use this to shade all of our silver details just picking a place to start 
I'm gonna go right here. On what I have now learned is called a jaggedy blade, rather than a bayonet. Which makes a lot more sense now, doesn't it? And with that done, what we're now going to do is going to take some Fire Slayer Flash and use this to shade all of our Rune Lord Brass areas. And so with those shades applied, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Pterodon Turquoise. Just this little bit. I'm going to use this around the bottom lip. around the eyes. Just like that. And so with that done, our man skewer bolt boys are what I would call a war hipster battle ready. And they look absolutely fantastic already. But what we are going to do is we are going to take them to the next level before, well, after I've done showing them off. <laughs> Just for a moment. There we go. There's all three of them. So what we are going to do is we are going to first take some Screaming Skull. And we're going to use this in two different places. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our Screaming Skull and we're going to highlight the bowstring. There's a little too much paint on the brush there. What we're going to do is just going to run this Screaming Skull along the top edge. Like that. And along the bottom edge as well. Then what we also want to do, of course, we're going to highlight it around here. as well. But what we're also going to do with the Screaming Skull is we're going to use this to paint in his teeth. Just like that. And with that done, what we're then going to do is we're going to use some Pallid Witch Flesh. I'm going to use this to highlight the arrows. With that done, what we now want to do is we want to take some thinned down Carrack Stone. We want to use this to highlight the Manskewer crossbow. We do this by just picking out all the various grains in the wood. It can be a little bit fiddly and tricky. 
So just take your time. And just make your way along. And then next up, what we're going to do is we're going to take some thinned down or green camo. I'm going to use this to highlight all of the skin. I'm just going to start here on the ear. And then work my way down. picking out all the sharp edges and all the flesh and with that done what we're now going to do is going to take a tiny amount of administratum grey and we're going to use this to add just a little spot highlight on the sharpest points of the upper cloth. Just like that, just to give it a little bit more visual interest. And with that done, we're then going to do a very similar thing on the lower cloth, only this time we're going to be using Bane Blade Brown. Just picking out the sharpest areas, not having to do all the edges, but just enough to give it a little bit of visual interest and like the lights catching off of the edges of these bits of fabric. And with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to use some thinned down iron hand steel. I'm going to use this to highlight all of the silver. And with all of that iron hand steel applied, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some thinned down Sycorax bronze and we're going to use this as a highlight for all of our Rune Lord brass areas. For example, the little eye just there and the tongue. Like that. Similarly, on the armor pieces. So with that done, you should have some man skewer bolt boys. They look somewhat like this. They look pretty darn cool. So what we're going to do now is just going to add a few little extra finishing touches to them. The place we're going to start is with the kind of spikes and studs around the armour. Now I still don't know what they are. <laughs> Those of you who watch my Gut Rippers video will know this, but what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using some Pteranon turquoise to give them that kind of energy-esque patina type thing that they have. What we want to do is we just want to take that Pteranon turquoise just around the spike. Just want to add a little bit of this pterodon turquoise like that. And we don't have to do it on all of them. 
You can do it on as, as many or as few as you like. And do it around there. Do it around there as well. Then on the helmet, I'm going to do two of these. Just like that. And with that done, what we're then going to do is we're going to take some Gorse Blaster Green and we're going to use this to highlight in dots around the lip. Like that. But we're also going to use it to add just a little bit of extra brightness over that Pterodon Turquoise on those studs. Just like that. And with that done, all that's left to do Take a teeny dot of Evil Sun Scarlet and he uses to paint in the eyes. Just like that. And there we have it. Our Man Skewer Bolt Boys are now finished and they look wonderful. They're a really interesting, slightly different scheme to the Gut Rippers, um, but they come together really nicely. Using that grey instead of the various browns that we used on the Gut Rippers to just distinguish them on the battlefield that little bit more when you're looking from a top-down point of view, of course, is really, really effective. And I really, really love the little details on these guys. For example, all of their face armour, because they're archers, they've got one eye closed which is just a really cool, subtle little detail just for them. If you enjoyed this video, you love the channel, and you want to support me further like these legends and bosses on the screen before you, you can do so. Head to patreon.com forward slash warhipster or head to ko-fi.com forward slash warhipster. Alternatively, you can now become a YouTube channel member by heading to the channel page and clicking on the join button just here, just like these absolute bosses have done. And if you just want to shoot me a little thanks, just because you really love this video, you can click on the thanks button just below this video. Don't forget to share it, like it, comment on it, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And to make sure you stay up to date, don't forget to click the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all very soon in the next one. Happy Wargaming.